find results. It's it says, oh. What do you want to know? Yeah, so I just want to know, you know, how do you um, make, repeat, you know, I was learning from, what's his name, uh, Cole oh, yesterday about having consistent, repeatable uh, results, you know, um, to, and being able to generate them, you've got to optimize. So I want to know, yeah, how do you make your clients rich? Because that's the phase two. I want to make my clients rich and I want them to be repeatable. And also, you know, I know how you spent nine months, you know, working on your product, but how did you even know that that nine months was, it was even going to make a product that would even generate yeah, results? Yeah, so, I mean, right, so we had V1, that is a big lead or not. So V1 took us about two months to build, which was at the very beginning. And then V2, which is now what we call Easy Grow, is basically was this amplifier that makes sense. So this took like two months, but this took nine. So the reason I had the confidence to put nine months into it is because all I was doing was shutting out this. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so everyone here has a course, right? Yeah. You took nine months to build it? Nine months. Yeah. So then we've got one module for that which is Genesis, which took me three months, and it took me for every hour of content in that, it's 30 hours of work. So, did did you log it? Let, let me explain to you. Pardon? Did you log all of this? Log it all? Yeah. And track how long yeah. you spent doing it. Yeah. Well, I just looked at my calendar, I was like, oh, I've been working okay. 12 hours a day, for like six days, and we've got nine months. So I sort of did that in the end. So, all right, I was thinking about this, because I was like, doing my hands up. When it comes to courses, you've got two types of content. And there's people don't teach this because they don't, like, well, I understood this. Oh, my handwriting's actually not that bad. So you've got dynamic content and you've got static content, right? So you're an easy grow, right? So easy grow consists of actors and genesis and self transcendence, and that is static content. That basically, the static stuff are principles. These are things that don't change, right? So you know if you're teaching trading, if you teach the idea of diminishing returns, mm. that's a law. So it's nature. It doesn't. It doesn't change. So this doesn't change. But dynamic is the is the thing where you've got like cold outreach systems, cold email systems, like YouTube terms and conditions changing, thumbnails, like that's the shit when you make it once, but you're gonna have to remake it because it's got to have like an entropy to it. So yeah, so it took me nine months to do, but most of my time was spent on the static stuff. Because what I learned is that if you can have the best systems, you can build the best systems to teach, but if people don't have the right paradigm to approach them, everything goes wrong. So you know how Sam did this? Where like with an up level, he had like the Facebook ads module, which was pretty static, because he, he taught the first principles in, in, um, in Accelerator. Yep. But if he didn't go through the foundation of modules, it wouldn't make any sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, what's your niche? Buying and reselling concert and sport tickets. Okay. So, you probably have like a way of doing that, right? Yeah. But you probably have a way of thinking about it. And your strategy is born out of your paradigm. Yeah. So, you have to teach the paradigm. Because what everyone does in the coaching consulting space is they teach the dynamic <coughs> strategies. Mm -hmm. And then what happens is 12 months elapses, the market shifts, and, and this is no longer relevant. But what will always be relevant is this. What do you mean by the paradigm? What's the paradigm? Paradigm is like the way that you see your thing. Give an example. How do you, what's your paradigm? All right. So for example, so we teach client acquisition, right? So what I need to teach someone before they even build a cold email system, right? So we, okay, so put it in perspective before I explain. So we've, ha we've had... Since February, probably about 800 people go through Easy Grow. Our refund rate is like 0.3%. Our dispute rate is like 0.5%. And we've got 900 win posts. And an unholy amount of social proof. So it works really well. But the paradigm, so for example, if I want to teach cold email, right? People think that cold email is just like, you, you, you have to have the right copy, you have to have the right offer, you have to have like a, a, a software, and you, you run it and it works. And you can give people those tools, but as soon as it breaks, the entire thing falls apart. So for example, if I'm looking at email, I'm going to be looking at something like the scientific method. Right? And let's just pretend that says the scientific method, for example. I'm also going to be looking at something like natural selection to explain how we find variables that work and stuff like that. And you know, you can also have evolution, genetics, and stuff like that. Um, I'm also looking at psychology. So this is the big one. So there's a module in Easy Grow called Asymmetric Psychological Leverage, which is three hours long. And it took me about <clears throat> probably about 100 hours to make it. Wow. And what it basically is, is it's like me brain dumping everything I know about psychology into a PDF in a Google Doc. Can I like put it up or is it like a... 
Um, Probably not. Let me let me show an example of what an acquisition genesis module looks like. Yeah. Um, this one's one. I think you can. I think you plug in. Do you plug in one of those devices? It's like that. I can just. I can. I can pull it up. Here. Yeah. Better to use an laptop. Because you you have to talk, you have to teach the first principles. Because if you don't, people they just don't know how to think. Because you can teach. Maybe for you it's different with YouTube automation because it's quite simple. But you've probably got a way of looking at it. I'm like, still. I'm still. I'm still not sure what you mean. What's the way of looking at it? Well, it's the way you deal with it, right? So, like, how do you approach it? Is yeah. it like why? Why do you do certain things a certain way? Yeah, exactly. It's basically giving like the reasons to why you behave in a certain way you behave. Mm -hmm. So, I can. So, the prime example of this is, for example, asymmetric cycles below <coughs> inside of Easy Road. So, this is the PDF that we run through. Um, I don't know if you can see this, right? So you can, yeah. yeah. And this is how long it is. Pretty so long. This, and this is basically just principles in psychology that you can use to explain why people convert. Okay. So if someone asks me, like, how do I get clients? I'm like, well, you have to know what people want. But how do you know what people want? You don't understand psychology. Mm -hmm. And then you can apply the principles from psychology to acquisition, then it supercharges the whole thing. So the first part of the program that we have is focused solely on the principles. Another example is um, acquisition systems theory, which is a three hour video. And this basically runs through like how to think in systems, systems theory, feedback loops, metrics, all the stuff that you intuitively understand, yeah. but your clients don't. So the reason you can become successful in your space is because you, it's, it's the way that you see it. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah I got it. How do you, do you get that out of your brain? Then? It's not nice. Yeah. It's not, well, you have to, um, so you have to start with the first principles, right? So, I just wrote this off. The thing, the reason that position genesis took me three months to build, is because I have to do like a whole month of thinking. Because, so, who, who's, who, who understands what first principles are? Yeah, we're familiar with the, with the term. So you start with something at the very bottom, which is basically a fundamental truth that cannot be further questioned. And if I want to teach this, let me, let me think of an example here. So if I want to teach the scientific method, right, and explain to someone how you have to have like variables and tests and you know feedback and shit, like I have to come all the way back to natural selection because the scientific method is basically like built off of our understanding of how the natural world selects variables that are optimal. That makes sense. So if I want to teach someone how to build a body email campaign, which is you know we could we could say like the twentieth principle way up here, which is like what cold email strategy works. We have to bring it all the way down to the fundamental truth, which cannot be further questioned, which is something that's going to be along the lines of variation is the key to evolution. If, I, if someone asks me how to run whole emails and I just start like here with the scientific method without understanding or helping them explain, explain to them, all the principles is built on them, they just, it, it, their brain explodes without makes sense. It's the same thing, for example, with like, the, okay, the first principle of psychology. Um, it, right at the bottom here is pain avoidance. So we'll just, we'll just put PA. So basically all human behavior is born out of pain avoidance. It's either seeking pleasure or avoiding pain. But, you can explain that to someone, but you, it doesn't explain why you need psychology to get clients, if that makes sense. But if you go if you go through it, and I've got a video on YouTube that sort of explains why that's important to understand, then you get to the, the thing up here, and it all stacks on top of each other. So to answer your question, the reason it took so long is because I was reasoning from first principles. And then I was like, I had to organize it, because I was like, well, first of all, I need to understand the niche. They need to have a niche, and then they have to have the offer. And then I was like, what next? Like, how do you structure the paradigm? And then you start with the very, the very beginning, which is like systems thinking, natural selection, psychology, metrics. The other one is rationality, because if you teach someone how to run cold emails, but don't teach them how to manage their emotions, that's completely fine, right? It's kind of like if, well, it's like if you're going to teach that. If you teach someone how to close, but not how to like manage their emotions, they're just completely ruined. And the first principle of sales is probably emotional management, because it's a transfer of emotion. Is that? <clears throat> yeah, yeah, definitely. And how were you able to, you know, still run your business, still generate money, um, even though you're in That's a good question. Yeah, yeah, so, well, that just comes down to like, having a team, right? Yeah. Um, so when I was building Easy Grow, we were doing... So this was in... When did I launch? I launched it in February. So in February, I think we were doing, like, over 50 a month. So now we do about anywhere between 700 to 800. Um, so we've jumped from 150 to 700 to 800. This is why product's the main thing. Because what people don't understand is that like, how do you improve your sales conversion? Like, how do you improve your share rate? How do you improve everything? It's all upstream of like the thing that you're selling. 
is if you send traffic to a jam, it won't go anywhere. So you can sell as many people as you want, but if they're not absolutely blown away by the product, like for example, your experience with EasyGrow so far, you're like, oh shit, this is actually good. So anyway, so I started building this, so we would have had January, December, November, October. But it started in like April, so it's more like 11 months. We just call it nine. So we had, I didn't start building this, like I said, until I had version one completed on the other work. And at that point, I had, I think, two sales reps. Um, and I also had the YouTube channel as well. So it was just system. Like, Did you keep the YouTube channel going? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you can see my videos. I, I don't like I've got some sort of term of illness. <laughs> like, it was not a, it was not a, no, seriously, this, that building before February, like that year, was just horrible. I shaved my head and everything. I actually looked ill. And a lot of you saw the, the consequence of that in April last year, or this year. I remember, I looked like a. So if you could go back to make sure you, you wouldn't go ill, what would you do? You can't. Uh, <coughs> it would have taken me like two years to do it if I wanted to do it healthily. Right. But I thought, I thought when I started it, it would just be like a two month endeavor. But the problem is, is like I, I'm too much of this damn perfectionist. But like I wanted to explain one thing, it has to be completely. You know, when you go to practice Genesis, you understand. Because you'll go through it and you'll be like, oh. Because what I'm trying to do is make as many of those aha moments. Because a lot of people think that the value comes from like your offer and solving the problem. But the real value comes from changing someone's mind and the way they think and see the world. So who here bought from Sam Robinson? Right? You can see it. Hey, put your hand up. Yeah. Uh, everyone loves Sam, but not because he helped them get results, but because he helped them see. Because people are like, fuck now, like, I can actually like, I know what I'm doing with this. <laughs> and that's like, we see it in like the result in the um, wind posts and stuff. People are like, oh, I can actually like see. Thanks. You give them so much that they know it's on them and they know it's their responsibility. Yeah, mm -hmm. because once you have the paradigm, like, you, all you have to do is just do the work, right? Mm -hmm. Can I ask you what your routine looked like when you were going through that process? You know, yeah. How did, how did it come? How was your day to day? Um, yeah, so I can sort of draw it out. It wasn't, I wouldn't model it. I would basically. Okay, so the problem about this, like I wake up like 8 a.m. and then literally, so this is the thing, I stopped going to the gym, I stopped meditating, I stopped trying to eat healthily, I stopped all of those good habits that you're supposed to do that self improvement YouTubers tell you to do. I might have been, you would be happy with me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I didn't do anything. So it was, it was 8 a.m. Um, and then, like, I, it was basically work from 8 a.m. to about 8 p.m. <coughs> uh, to about 8 p.m. Um, and then I'd sort of take like a one hour break for like lunch or something. But I did that and like what would happen is my immune system went to shit, my sleep went to shit, my relationship fell apart, I lost a load of friends, it was a very bad time with me. But I was so like fucking obsessed that I just kind of just let it all go. Um, at least you kept your fashion sense. <laughs> <laughs> Some things, first principles, first principles, you can't go. Um, but it was more like the routine was sort of cyclical. So it would be like, I'd have, like, because each module took me like a whole, sometimes a week to make. Like, Actors and Genesis took like three months, right? It was like 11 videos in there, so it was like a video a week, basically. So I'd like, you'd ideate the video, I'd run through the ideation process, and then I'd, I'd have it sort of like scripted. And then I'd build it. The building was the worst part. Um, but all that work was, it sort of went like this. And then you record it. So everyone's so focused on recording, they think that's the secret, but really like you spend all you spend 80% of your time, probably no, 95% of your time in this stage, where you build the idea and then you're like, what's the first principle of this video? What do I start with? Because if I want someone to understand point five, they have to understand point four, three, two, and one before that. But if I start with five, it's like you're trying to teach something that is so far along the line. It'd be like trying to teach, like, my girlfriend at the time, um, she was a primary school teacher, um, and she was teaching phonetics to kids. So, like, you know, how does, uh, basically, like, how do I actually say, like, sound? And I was like, that's kind of what I'm doing here. Like, you start with the phonetics, like, just the fucking sounds, before you even try and teach them to say, like, and or something like that. You know? Um, what was that ideation process like? Like, you through that there? Yeah, so, it was simple. So... Basically, well, it wasn't simple, because it was quite horrible. But basically, what you do, um, the way I did this, in fact, I could probably find it on my laptop. Um, you need a Trello book, basically. Um, Trello, Trello, yeah. Let's see if I can find this. 
because I mapped out the entirety of Easy Room on Shadow Board before I built it, and that took me like two weeks. Um, <coughs> Did you map it down to the videos level inside the launchers or even further? What do you mean? Like enough response. Oh, yeah. yeah. So the journal board, I assume you have the I want to teach this, this, and this. Those are the modules, those are yeah, the yeah, videos so, inside. So this is what the, the macro thing looked like, right? You can't really see it, but I've got um at the time it's called business genesis, self-transcendence, calendar filling foundations. But then I realized that they were mostly the same thing, so I just merged into <clears> one. But then what, you, what I did is I sort of was like, in order for someone to actually get the result, what do they need to know? Like what's the minimal and most smallest amount of information I can give them in the fastest period of time possible for them to get the result they want? Um, so I built, it, I built them all out in theory, and then for each module, I would then build out the videos. And for each video, I would then build out the points. So it was kind of like, it was kind of like branch the node, where you've got like, at the top, you've got the program. And then inside of the program, because it's actually how easy it works, right? We've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine courses, right? And then inside of like each course, uh, da, 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 da. so for example, if we take an easy grow, let's take outbound systems. So you've got easy grow up here, outbound systems, and inside of outbound systems, we've then got eight other, eight different outbound systems we teach. So most coaches in this space, if they're teaching high ticket acquisition, they'll teach like one core email strategy. I was like, that's not good enough, I want A. Because I was like, uh, I don't want to give anyone an excuse. So inside of this, we've then got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then inside of these, right, then obviously you've got, you know, maybe like a couple of resources for this one. And then for this one, you've got like maybe five videos. And then this one, maybe you've got like eight videos. So it's kind of like a course within a course within a course within a course. It's like the matrix within a course. Yeah, <laughs> Inception. Yeah, but then, but then it's not. But it's not that. But it's not that complicated. For acquisition genesis, for example, or self transcendence, which is the first two ones. Just the one minus to do, G. Like you've got to go. It's only going on teaching. For acquisition genesis, we've got um one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven videos, and then for self transcendence, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, and then you know, for example, in Trial by Fire and Self Transcendence, we've got like three different resources that have their own videos in themselves. Mm -hmm. Because Trial by Fire and Self Transcendence is like a three hour video. How do you come up with the names? I don't know. <laughs> that, was, that, was, that was one thing that kept me through it, ironically. Because like I enjoyed like, you have to like, you have to make it as, like, as curiosity. Because if I want someone to sit through a three hour video, they need to be like, what the fuck is that? Yeah. <laughs> but they have to be, otherwise, they're, like, otherwise they just don't watch it. Because mm -hmm. if I called, Let's, let's take an example. So, in oh, sale, three hours. It's like, ah, oh, okay. Yeah, so, well, that's the thing. Um, but how many did, does actually do the work of watching the video? Like, yeah, I'll explain that in just one sec. So, for example, in, in Apps and Justice, there's a video, three, three hours, 12 minutes, 47 seconds. Um, and it's basically about like the scientific method. But I call it iterative Darwinian acquisition. Because <laughs> if I just call it the scientific method, no one's going to watch it. Right? Because no one really cares, although I might. Might tell me on that, but nobody else is going to care about that. Would you say what product driven entrepreneur? I don't know. Would you say your product yeah, driven entrepreneur? Miles, Miles, leaps and bounds. Like that. I was going to say, because if, 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 if it does marketing and sales like this, you would have been like. <laughs> but that's kind of what we do. Like, it's like, if you look at any great company, any great company, they're all product first. Like, look at Google, even Amazon, right? So look at Amazon. People think that Amazon, you're not, the product they have is the fastest shipping. Yeah. The widest variety and the cheapest costs. That's their product. Right? And nobody can compete with them. The same with Apple, the iPhone, the same with Google, the search engine, like no one can follow. Um so I wanted to just build something where like I know the only way someone can beat me is if they build something better than this. And for them to do that they have to take themselves to the point of hospitalization. <laughs> which, which is not an easy thing to do, right? So sorry, what, what, what did you ask about the How many does that does do the work like you said you give people money back if they don't get the results. Mm -hmm. You have people who like doesn't do the work but still wants the money. It's incredibly rare. So like, if we're very clear from this, this is the thing about the guarantee is like we were kind of scared because we were like we're going to guarantee twenty clients over a six month period, and if you don't make the money back, we also buy a transfer and give you. A review. It's a lot of risk for us because we actually go into the red and people start triggering that. Um, and since February, which was when we started launching, we had like none. Why do you think that is? Just because of the, the, the fucking depth of the thing. If someone gives you this much, you feel obliged to not ask them for a refund. And like if, 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 
It's kind of like if you buy it and you go through Apple's Genesis and suddenly you're in the entire way you see acquisition, and also the mindset one was another, another thing entirely. If they go through that and they're like, oh shit, like now I can actually operate properly. Like it's a different, it's a, it's a different way to add value that is separate to the, to like the numerical output the client wants. Mm -hmm. And it's way more valuable, it's way more useful because I love Sam Ovens for teaching me to see more than teaching me to make money. So this is the thing, Charlie, is anybody that actually went through Sam's material loved it. Yeah. Like, like, like it was like a TV show that they, it was like Game of Thrones. Like they remembered Man, every like single whole fucking three seasons of Riverdale or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And yeah. I feel like you've kind of gone through that same thing where the, uh, the, the customers, they, they love Easy Grow and they love everything because the, it's so detailed and you've worked so hard on it that it's just, they remember it. It was yeah. like a movie. Yeah, you know what like, I mean? I, like, I mean, like, I literally put my, like, I put my relationship into this, my health into this, my sleep into this, like, every, I sacrificed everything yeah. to do it. And all and the then, customers talk about it. They all talk about, oh my God, like, how good was that? And you know, it, 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 yeah. it becomes fast. But we're the only company yeah. with, an, with a trust pilot in this space. Yeah. I mean, we've got 500 five star reviews. No, what was the V1 like? Like your experience going from V1, getting customer feedback, and then that yeah, fueling so, the V2. It's all just starting line. Right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'll show you yeah. what we did. So we did this. This is really handy, but you just you just wipe all your hard work away. So, so basically, our first 15 clients, we had no product. Mm. So we wanted to establish product market fit, or more important, message market fit, before we even built anything. Right. Because so I was like, I don't want to build V1 until I've actually got cash in there. Um, so we sold these people effectively with V0 on the premise that once it's built, they'll get it, um, which was thin air. Then what we did is it was sort of, once we had the 15 people, we knew what mattered to them. Because the thing is, a lot of people build a course backwards. They build a course based on what they want to teach, mm. not what people want to learn. Right. And then you end up with this weird bloated thing, and, and then like people are like, oh, what the hell is this? And then they've got to wait for all this stuff to get to a matter. So I then went to these 15 people after we, we had, I think we sold them for two grand each at the beginning, like 30 grand in that. And I said, what exactly do you want? Like, what do you need? And they were like, I just want the cold email thing, the way you reached out to me, I want you to teach that. So V1 was basically um, something called the Terminator Loom system, um, which was the main, like, the main point of value because we got all these clients through our Loom system. And they were like, well, it would be handy if you could teach me how to do that myself. And then this consisted of basically like um, the copy, the script, and then the SOPs, right? And then that went on for a while. And then the problem that happened is I gave people the system. And this is where the paradigm thing comes in, but I didn't realize that until later. But then I realized they weren't doing the work. So I'd be like, here's a system, it works. They'd get results with it, and then they just fucking stop for some reason. So then I introduced the mindset module, which is basically just summarized by like, stop self sabotaging and actually just get on with it. Um, and that created you want. And then the problem we started to have is people were getting appointments but didn't know how to close them. So the, the way Easy Grow is developed is like we solve a problem for someone, and then that, that then creates another problem, and then we solve that and it creates another one. And so throughout the, the journey, that was all about the journey. Yeah, we've just um, <laughs> we've done that. So then we've got the sales module. Then we've got the sales modules, um, and then we also start building other cold outreach methods. Um, and that was V1, and we ran that for about six months. But I felt really guilty because I knew it wasn't that great. And the other thing about Easy Grow, I know this sounds like some sort of virtue signal, but I'm terrified it's not going That's how you build something amazing. Because if you ask all the like, billionaire founders, they're like really scared of like, shit. They know it's amazing, but they're like constantly afraid. It's like, um, it's like professional athletes. Like, they're afraid of someone coming to do to them what they did to everyone else. So they know they're competent and they have confidence in their ability to like get results on the field or whatever. But they're also really scared someone's going to come and like, I'm terrified there's some old motherfucker like in his mum's bedroom like building something better than me. Like I don't like the idea of that. So that's kind of what I did. Um, yeah, and then basically off the back of this, I was like, what, what's missing? Um, and then I realized it was this like massive like weird gray cloud of people being like not knowing how to use metrics, not knowing how to test variables, not knowing how to think, not knowing how to be critical. Not knowing how to be rational, not knowing how to, um, like I said, iterate, build systems, understand like input, output, process, feedback, and the environment, all that shit. And I could do it because I've been doing this for like five years. So I just basically had to download my paradigm into PDFs, and then that was that was the, the, the part that wasn't very fun. So Charlie, for Alex, I think sorry, uh, I think what what I'm getting out of this is 
you had to have the V1 to figure out. Yeah, you can't. You can't. Don't right? try and so, put. Right. Yeah. Don't yeah, try so, and put nine months into it unless you put a month in first. Yeah, because I've gotten better at training salespeople just because of the sales people at Forma. I know what they want a lot better, so I think it's just a natural journey for you have to go on, and then also treating your initial students probably like rock stars as well, mm -hmm. giving them as much attention because they teach you as much as you teach them mm -hmm. on what what what's missing. Mm -hmm. And just one other quick question, just on the ops, how your, your operations evolved from that 150 to 700, which, which seemed like it happened relatively quickly once yeah, Easygrow yeah. came out, how so, did you evolve that? Yeah, so you've got, so basically, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term operational drag. We're just going to once again pretend that says operational for me. Um, there's two things in your company that determine how difficult it is to operate it, at least at scale with profit. Because we can, I figure that we can do 800 grand a month with 70 percent margins. So we can make 10 million a year, 7 million profit, which is more than like most nine figure businesses would keep, right? And there's two things to determine how hard it is to operate at scale, is your niches, right? I'll just put niche two and your products. So this is, a lot of you guys will be, so you're not, you might not be that familiar, but you guys know I like one thing. So I just have one product, one offer, one market, one message, one sales team, one payment plan, one everything, right? Um, as soon as you have more than one niche, more than one product, you've basically got two businesses. And then you know, everything just sort of sinks about itself, which is why I'm still reluctant to run a mastermind. But it's a story for the day. What was the question? Sorry, we're going to do Yeah, I was just. So from 150, which is pretty much where you've expensed it okay. now, to 700. So the, 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 yeah. the truth is that because it's info, it doesn't make really a difference at all. Because yeah. what we do is the way, the way our deliverables work is we have a product, right, which we can just, which we can call, actually, we'll call this the program, right? We have a program, which is easy, right? Um, and then we have the calls, and these are coaching calls that I don't run. So basically what we started doing is, Bo and I, both my business partner, we used to run two coaching calls a week in a group setting, um, and we always did it in a group setting, never ever do the one-on-one -on -one stuff, unless you're like, well, you want to charge like, you know, something 10 grand a month, you, you can do it one-on-one. -on -one. Um, so then I have community calls, and then I have the community as well. Um, and this lends really well to scale, because there's no onboarding call, there's no one-on-one -on -one thing, there's no audit, there's no operational track. The client, literally the way it works. Um, this is after they've paid as well. After they've paid, yeah, we set the expectation. And then they basically just, they're in the program. We don't do anything else. So the, 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 the truth is, is that the difference between 150 and 700 is nothing. With the exception of like, maybe needing to add some more um, group coaching calls with the, with the community, um, there isn't any difference. Like maybe, yeah, sure, maybe we've got an operations manager that does like some support tickets and shit. But as soon as you start adding things, it destroys it. So the, the secret is like less is way more. And that's what we've always done. I know that's kind of ironic with my like 400 hour course. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know. How, uh, how often do you do the, uh, the group calls, man? How many? 20 hours? a week. 20 a week. Yeah. Oh. So I run one on Mondays. <laughs> and then we've got like, so we've got like um, sales reviews. Reviews. Um, we've got like health coaching. Yeah. We've got mindset coaching. The way we wanted to structure this specifically is it sales first or objection handling? Because mm. if anyone has any problem, we solve it through the coaching. So if someone says like, I don't even interact with them in the course. This is like a, I'm really fucking. Sad. This is a call where they don't have the microphone and they can ask question in, in a chat. Yeah. So I used to be like nice on those calls. I'm not very nice anymore mm. because like it's when you're running like a Q and A, it should be a Q and A. So the way we structure it is like, um, in the beginning I say, welcome, blah, 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 how time flies, here we are again, whatever. And then I get them to put their questions in the chat. Never, ever, ever let anyone unmute. Because if someone unmutes and starts asking a question, they will fucking context overload the entire call. And then 25 minutes of the call is dedicated to them telling like how they were bullied when they were five or something, right? So it's like, it just becomes like a therapy session. So we just get them to put their questions in the chat, and then I can get through, I, I run them for one hour ex like explicitly. So I say at the start, if there's any questions you've got that I can't answer in this time frame, you put them in school and they'll be answered there. But, yeah. So back to your uh, planning process. So you use Trello, you use mind maps, is there anything else you use to kind of get your ideas into it? Well this is why, this is why everyone builds course, courses with slideshows. If you want to do it detailed, you have to use something like PDFs. Because you almost have to think of it like each model is like a book. Right? So you know when you write a book, you've got start, middle, finish, right? It's kind of the same thing. If you try and do that with slides, like it's, it gets way too complicated. Like you try and teach like fucking like scientific method, natural selection, evolutionary biology and shit in slides, you're just going to get lost. And if you build it in a PDF like this, 
it's linear, it moves down. But if you build it in slides like this, it moves across, and then you've got to go back to this point to explain point number five, and it just gets really complicated. So the way I build, like, I'll give you an example. And people get really confused by this when they get in, but I tell them to sort of sit around with it. So for example, with iterative, with iterative Darwinian attraction, which is like the scientific method, it starts with an idea called common descent. So if I, and I, I set people up for this in the intro, I'm like, look, there's going to be videos in there, and you're going to think, what the hell is this? But it's like the karate kid wax on, wax off thing. It's like, why are you teaching me this? Well, I'm going to kick you and you're going to block it. And that's, I'm also not going to kick you. Right, you get the point. So you start with like the very first thing, and then once I've like, because usually when I started this for a attraction, I was like, I need to teach natural selection, but I was like, in order for them to understand natural selection, they have to understand common descent. Then they have to understand descent and modification. Then they have to understand natural selection. But if they understand that, they have to understand what it's mean fitness, which is like the term used to describe like um, whether an organism can survive. Then they have to understand traits, then genotypes, then variation, and then DNA fractals. So what I'm trying to get at here is that client acquisition systems work in the fractal, which means what works in the micro also works in the macro. And that's how you scale. So to teach scale, you have to teach fractals. But to teach fractals, you have to go all the way to the first principle. Does that make sense? You, if you try and do that in a slideshow, you just confuse the shit out of So sorry. What do you mean that in your course, you show the PDF, you scroll down, and you, you talk to your audience? Yes, yeah, so the and video. And they have the PDF, they can download it also? Yeah, so the video is just like. It's just this. Hey everyone, Charlie Morgan here, and welcome to Iterative Dull. And then it's just me running through the PDF. Okay. Mm -hmm. Julie, you don't even show your face on the other. No, no, no. This is a They don't need to see you, they just need to hear you. Right? In, in every also, place. have you ever tried recording on like, a reality show? Or... <laughs> in, in, in all the modules, you never see your face. So. They don't need to. Because they've already bought from you, they already trust you. Right? He just doesn't want to scare them off. No, but dude, like, if you try. And, <laughs> no, it's also like, if, like when you're, if you're really in, like, if you're really in the zone, like making, like, a video, and you're trying to think about your appearance, like, it completely throws you off. Like, and also, like, I, I just sit there in, like, a dressing gown looking like a Macy. So, <laughs> you know, like, since they're talking about natural selection, and I definitely haven't developed cerebral palsy in the last three hours, but, you know. <laughs> but it works, yeah. And I was about to ask, I think, um, I, I think product has been, like, a big theme. I'm going to be selfish here and ask for me, if you were in my shoes, like, with the audience that I have, and um, I've, I've chatted to David, would you say I should focus in on product? Yeah. Or should I focus in on all the other things that, like, as you know, I've been talking about ads and all these other things. If you're in my shoes, what would you do to kind of go from that 150 that you're at to go to 800? Is Charlie gone through the product? Yes. Kind of. I've been through it and done for you, sir. Yeah. I would do just do both. Because like I think what you've got will scale, but it's a question of how safe you want to feel when you get there. Because mm. I'm in a position now where I can make all this money and not have to do much work, but it's purely because I'm sat on this like mountain of pain from building this thing. Yeah. So I'm up, I'm up here on you know feeling great with whether that's most to be right. But the, the great thing is like, I feel yeah, I feel pretty good about it because I also know that like if someone buys the thing they actually get results. Yeah. yeah. Can, can, can I can I, uh, let me just interject on this because I think the product thing is like from a sales perspective is you feel so confident about what yeah. you built and that's just so it's, powerful. It's also dangerous. Yeah. Very fucking dangerous. Way. Because if you think it's good, you stop trying. So like, you know how they say like a father who thinks he's a good father is not a good father. Like as soon as you as soon as you like think you're it, you just completely. Fall. So uh, maybe to, to rephrase the way I said it in that case is it's not that you feel that it's too good is that you feel like you've covered all bases. Yeah. Like you feel like it's good in a sense where I've got and you're right. There's always going to be improvements that you're going to make. Like we had to make we too because eventually up level somewhat became a little bit outdated. So you have to update it. But provided if, like if you're asking a question because you feel that way, if you don't feel like it's enough, then yeah, I think probably focus there. So. Right. so but if you feel like you've covered all bases, and if someone, if you spoke to someone on the phone, you're for sure, for sure, you've got everything covered, mm -hmm. then that's really important. Well, the reps love it. Yeah, the reps do love it. Charlie, how long is the program, the course, the videos? Well, total duration. Total watch time. Yeah, total watch time. Uh, that's about 275 hours. 275 hours. Yeah. And that's not including coaching. 
Yeah, like, yeah. Have you figured out the, the best teaching framework, like first, first principle, then the modality, then exercise for each module? Exercise is a shit. Right. What's the point of an exercise? To so just then remember what you've done. But it's not, it's like you want to apply, not exercise. Is that what you do by exercise? Do you mean by getting them to like, just do like a test or something? Or yeah, you mean something for them to practice and just really remember what they just doing with you? Yeah, see, so you don't want to give people too many options. You want to, you want to just bombard them with a huge amount of like mind shifting information and then just get them to focus on doing one thing. So, for example, I'll get someone to go through like fucking 40 hours of content, mindset, a paradigm, all that shit. And then I'm like, just make 200 cold calls a day. Just, just do one, all I need to do is just do one thing. Please just do one. But if, if every step of the way you're letting do this, then this, then this, then this, then this, like, they just get so bogged down. And what you want to do is isolate the one thing they have to do to get what they want. Because it's always cause and effect, right? If someone wants to get something, they have to do one thing, usually, or two things. And then, yeah, we just, I just get them to focus. Otherwise, it's just, it doesn't work. Okay, this, might be. this ties into the question because I was thinking, how do you, I suppose by what you said now, yeah. if I want to get success or if I want to get my first win, right? I do need to watch the 275. No. Well, Mate, no, you, no one has watched all of it. How do you delineate it? When, when do you give them, now you take action? So it's, like you said, so it's a very important video. The first video they watch is the most important one of the entire program, right? Which is the introduction. And that's where you set the, the, the precedent for what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. So I basically make acquisition genesis and self transcendence complete mandatory do. It's, okay. it's even in the guarantee. If you haven't watched these videos, and I, I can't see like um, I can't see like PDFs and stuff that have been filled out and like exercise, I suppose, in that element. But if, if people aren't like completing things, like, they, they won't get the refund if they want it. Um, and also, what I'm then doing in these in self transcendence is I'm then I'm emphasizing action. So what happens here is it's like learning, 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 and then it's learning, 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 but it tails off into them actually doing something, which is usually like making cold calls, sending cold emails and stuff like that. Um, but like I, if I say to people at the beginning, like, don't be an idiot, just watch all the content. Like you should see it as a toolbox. Oh, you gosh. go in and you pick what you need, and then you fix the problem, and then you put the tool down, and then another problem comes up, and you're going to get what you need and you come back. Do you operate from the theory of constraints yeah. then? You focus on acquiring customers, like watch this to acquire customers. Once you acquire customers, you come back and I got the answer for the next problem. No, not really. Because it's, it's trying to do that with like 700 videos is just rude. Yeah. It's too much of a maze. And also it's way too binary because there's, no, ne there's never just going to be one path someone goes on. So what I want to do is just cover their entire brain and everything they need to know. And then just cross my fingers they remember the bits they need to. That's the other thing, is they, when they come into a problem, so let's say they go through Access Genesis, and then three weeks later, they're building out a cold DM system, and they're out KPI for something. And then they're like, how do I fix this? And then they're thinking, oh, I remember in, when we did um, non-linear metric management, oh, I'll go back and watch that video. And people do that. And if they don't do that, and they come on coaching calls and say, like, I don't know what to do, I'm like, go and watch this video. So I can direct them there, mm -hmm. I'm like the traffic board. And like, I'm like, if you want to go ahead, over you go, this way, that way. Because every question they could possibly need answering has been answered in those videos. So it also acts as a good support vacuum. But that's the other thing, we don't really struggle with support because people are so busy watching the videos. <laughs> <laughs> I have two things. First one is, how do you, obviously that's a big course, um, when you offer it, with just some simple copies and advert, what, what's the offer? So it's 20 clients guaranteed. This is danger, another danger is like, I could make, I mean like, so we've got 275-ish hours of content, hundreds of videos. I, I could make like a 24-hour video on just everything they're going to get. But this is the thing, is it's like, it's, it's non-linear in the sense that it's going to be good for one person. I just had to isolate, like, what does everyone want? And how do I position the course as a vehicle for them to get that? And how do I position the one, which is the big number 20, and that encapsulates the whole thing. It's like, if you buy easy grow, you get 20 clients guaranteed, right? And what they really get is like their brain completely turned upside down, their mindset completely shifted, and then the appointments start flowing in. But if you tell someone you're going to teach them how they get to improve their mindset, they're going to buy it. Because everyone's got too much of an ego to admit their mindset problem. So when do you tell them that though? When, when do they understand that? Once they that? purchase. Because once they bought, you can give them advice. Yeah. This is, this is the thing. Like, 
if someone like if you if you like if, what someone's bought from you, now you're an expert. <laughs> now they expect to way more than they haven't done. Yeah. Um, and it's like a Trojan horse. Like once the first payment's gone through, then you can go in and start like rewiring the brain. If you try and do this in the sales process, the ego flies up, yeah. and you will never close it. If someone's going to buy from us, they're usually familiar with the YouTube channel already. And I don't want to pay a referral person like 15% when the calendar's already fully booked. Yeah. There's no need. Um, the 20 clients guarantee, how many people actually get 20 clients? We don't know. Yeah. All I know is that no one has come to us and asked for money back. Yeah. So, you know, we, we, the thing is, is we, we built a system to track client results. Mm -hmm. and we tried to implement it. It's way too complicated. Mm -hmm. So, my advice. So obviously, I know the ideal way to build a course is to get 15 customers and then reverse engineer the course from what they're after. Yeah. What I was thinking was, it's, it's industry specific to what I do, which is um, a sales, sales training for caravans and lodges in the UK. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of already there. Um, but do you know they want it? Because <coughs> they don't want sales training. They want what happens as a result of them doing the training. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the course, like you can build the course, but it has to be around what they want. Mm -hmm. So you know how to do training. You've probably done it for yourself, mm -hmm. and you've sold the machine. You sold yes. It. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think you can. It'll probably be safe for you to build it. But the danger is you build it, and then you realise that the way that you want to teach it is not the way they need to learn. Mm -hmm. That makes yeah. sense. Yeah. So you kind of almost need to like have ten people and just be like, what, what do you actually want to teach? It's like a teacher to sell hundred caravans a month. But like, do you want that? Are you willing to sacrifice this for that? Do you want to do it this way? If I did it this way, would you like it? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've, I've trained about three people one to one. Um, then you probably know what you need to do. Yeah, obviously, I need more people to, to get to understand how to do it better. Um, if you've done it successfully for free, you can definitely, uh, for three people, yeah. then you can definitely build a course. But don't spend more than like a couple of weeks on the first version. And then what I was going to say was so, with my offer, um, Obviously, one of my concerns was that it's quite hard, it's not easy, a lot of people aren't going to be able to, to, to do it because it takes some seeds and balls and some crawling through the mud and you've got to move. You know what I mean? So, what's your offer? I don't have an offer as such. I mean, so what, one of my ideas of, of it was to say, how is it? How made 144 pounds? Okay, so your concern is that it's going to be difficult for people to do it? Uh, no, the, like yeah, no, the concern that the, I'm pretty confident the training will be, you know, the, the knowledge of the training is going to be a star and it's, and it's helpful and it works at implementing. Um, the concern is that obviously um, I can't guarantee their results because I don't think it's a sales job. So, obviously, people. Yeah, the way I got, I, the way I got around this, because I wanted to include our sales process in part of the guarantee to make sure they were actually doing it. So what I basically have in the guarantee is like, in order for you to qualify, you need to follow the process, but you need to make sure you record every one of your calls following the process. So you can get, that way you can guarantee it. Mm -hmm. and don't be afraid to offer the guarantee, because this is the thing, if you're afraid to offer one, people will be more afraid to buy it. Because yeah. the confidence has to come from you or the guarantee. Like, there's three places that someone's going to get the confidence to buy from you. It's either going to be your offer, it's going to be you, or it's going to be your client. There's nowhere, nowhere else can someone get confidence. Unless, unless it's from their own ego, and they just think they've got God's gift to whatever you're trying to teach, and they're like, yeah, you need to give me that, that's what I need, right? Which is sometimes the case. But if you don't have the confidence to create a compelling offer, they will not have the confidence to buy it. That's the problem. This is the first thing we teach them after. This is the first principle, for example. What do people need to buy from you? Confidence, where does it come from? These three things. And then we obviously have like a four hour video on how to create an offer, which is a story from the day. I love that you said that, Charlie, man, because everybody's afraid of giving a guarantee. Okay, when, and like, what if you're in a market like mine, crypto, where you can agree on where it goes? What well, people, people will understand you can't offer guarantee. So, which, will you still offer a guarantee, number one? Oh, we, we, offer, like, we offer a guarantee. Yeah, we just said to people, um, trade at least one of the four strategies across six months. Yeah. Keep a record of your trades so that we can, you know, if you say you don't work, one of the coaches can check if you're doing things correctly. And if you do those two things and you're not profitable after six months, we just fund you. And we, we, we've issued a small handful, you know. And they've got to attend. And they've got to attend. You have to think about this on their perspective, not yours. Whenever you're selling or building anything, like you build around the market, not around your ego. Not that you've got an ego, but this is one thing I do. 
Because it's like you can structure your company because because you feel a certain way. It's yeah. like you with the boredom thing, for example. Yeah. Just because you have an emotion doesn't mean giving a sense of that emotion is going to produce positive results in the market. If you behave like that, you're in some. That's what we did, like in April, we didn't talk. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't understand why did you have referrals? Because we don't need them. Okay. We've got we've never had a problem with call flow, and the reason we've never had a problem with call flow is because we focus on the product. Yeah. And because we focus on the product, we can have this offer, and I would rather have a strong offer with a strong referral system made mm. Yeah. And everything yeah. comes back to it. Yeah. Everything. Yeah. It's really, just I, it's the biggest mistake I think people make is they don't focus on the product. They spend a couple of days building a course, and then then all they worry about is Facebook ads. But it's like everything else takes care of itself if you know this. Yeah. Well, you've got that view from day one. Yes. Because all we've got to do is look at any massive successful company. Mm. Mm. Like, if any, any massive point, name any successful business that doesn't focus on the product. Like, these massive, huge corporations like Amazon, Google, you know, Apple, whatever, they're, they're all, they're all product, like Tesla's another example. How do you know that your product, like, works for people? Mm. How do you know because that? Because no one asks for a reason. But this that, is, that, that, that's the only this thing. This is the thing, yeah, but this is the thing. Yeah. You, don't, you can't really track customer success in the info space. We try, yeah. we've got a system for it, and the only way you can do it is by surveying people every week, and, and it's, it's messy. But we know, so for example, we've got 500 stars of Trustpilot. The, the main thing I look at is win posts in school. So we get like 100 win posts a month. Yeah. But like the main thing, the main indication that you've got a good product is you don't have a high refund or dispute rate, or people aren't asking too many support to it. So this is the way Amazon does it. Is the way they measure their customer success is based on how many support tickets are raised. Yeah, okay. Because the reef, uh, not wanting a refund could actually also will be that they like the product so much and they like that you have put in so much effort in it. Right? That's the main thing, because it's effort. If yeah. someone can actually feel that you put blood, sweat, and tears into it, they won't feel bad if it doesn't work that well. But yeah, I know it yeah, works yeah, because yeah. we've got literally like 17 different systems they can use to get clients. So if someone comes to me and they're like, it hasn't worked, I'm like, well, how many systems do you try? I'm like, I tried one. But like there's 16 more. They're like, oh, okay. You can't do this. You have to. You, you have to build it so you literally cannot fail. So people will be happy with not it not working just they to know that it will if they follow everything. everything. So they, maybe they will not get re results. Well, but they will this. be like, if I followed everything, I would have. Yeah, yeah, that's kind of how it works. Yeah, because yeah. yeah, if they can see that it's not there, if you can see, all right. So if you buy from me, and I I make it impossible for it to be my fault you haven't got results. Exactly. And you have no moral leg to stand on for asking me for a refund. So that's, not that we engineer in that way around like trying to optimize for not getting refunds, but if I give you everything you could possibly need and way more, and you still don't make it work, like we've had people, like a couple of odd, very odd refund requests of people who just haven't done the work, and I'm like, well, can you show me the data? They're like, oh, my data's corrupted. I'm like, well, show me the, you know, show me the edit history on the spreadsheet. Oh, I haven't got that. Show me the sales recordings. Oh, I didn't record them. And it's like, well, how can I give you a refund if I can't verify it's my fault? And yeah. as soon as you ask them that, their entire argument falls apart. And then the yeah. ego goes up and they just dispute anyways. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's not much you can do about that, unfortunately. But, but it's the main thing to get any massive company. It's all the product. Yeah, so it's not your, it's not your job that, to get them results. It's their job to get them results. Uh, yeah, exactly. Results. That's the beauty of the info. Yeah, you just need to create <laughs> the like, perfect product, product. Yeah, but it's not, you're not like, you're, you're, you're focusing on the product, but more than yeah. anything, you're focusing on the customer, right? Because, like, if you focus on the customer, that's how you build in the same product. Because you ask yourself, what do they want? What do they need? And you need to understand that better than they do. Yeah. Because, like, if, for example, if I know that someone needs to understand advanced evolutionary biology concepts to properly build a whole coin or something, they will never, in a million years, know that sort of thing. Yeah. So you sort of innovate on that behalf. So, so I, I have a ten, ten I, I get stuck in obsessed about the product and be like I want all the clients to like all of them you to get to really results start. but yeah you, know, you have to release control. Yeah. You have to just build something and just leave them to it. Yeah. Because you can't like you can't micromanage your clients. It's just impossible because you can't scale up. But if you build something that's so amazing that no one can fail if you actually do the work, it kinda of works. Tony, do you remember? It's a bit of a different question, but when you were, it was in April, you were running still just um, organic traffic. Do you remember like what the numbers were or like, or, or specifically how you're tracking YouTube views to apps to 
all the books. I didn't track any of it because the cards were. I don't read out any of my data. Because the can I mean you you've got a little That's bit of, my like, job now. Yeah, he's got a, <laughs> he's got a better grasp on it, but like our calendars have just always been full, so I haven't bothered looking. Mm. And that's why it's like it's kind of like if you go to a doctor, the first thing they're gonna check is your heart rate, if there's a problem, mm. for the most part, right? And that's like the, the main way they're gonna tell if you're alive. I mean, you know when you, if you call 99, like, are they breathing? Mm. If they're breathing, then okay, we can start to diagnose it. So the way I look at my business now is I'm like, are the calendars full great for breathing? But it's so easy to get lost in all these metrics and try and tweak them and worry about them. But if the main thing's sorted, isn't it? Like it'd be like it'd be like if someone's not breathing, but you're trying to like fix their fumble toenails. Mm. <laughs> There's not a point. They're dead. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, yeah. I'm like, I'm like, I love metaphors, mate. I, I, yeah, that's, the, that's one thing I do in the program a lot: is make analogies. Because when you're explaining outside concepts, you have to give examples. Yeah. Otherwise, it's like. Yeah. Well, um, you, you said if you were building like a phenomenal product. Which it very much sounds like you are. You've got to charge like it's a phenomenal product. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to. Yeah. Yeah, no, no, I felt that when I was. Um, there was a time I thought that I wasn't a, a good coach. And it was more so like the people that I was letting in. Like they just weren't. You, you know, sometimes you're just not ready to do some shit. Yeah. You'll pay it to feel like comfortable and say that I did something about it. And then you'll get people messaging you saying, I'm messaging you just because I can. <laughs> so, yeah. That's what that'll do, mate. Yeah. 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 Oh, sorry, I like it. <laughs> 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 you you like Featured. Tony, you said that you wanted to move to just solely organic, right? Yeah. And, and, um, I don't have to David about it yet. We want to get rid of that. Oh, they Yeah, because it costs like 100 grand a month. And um, you still want to be maintaining that 7 800k? Yeah. Um, no, when we spoke, we was listening to. Um, Oh, he was like, he's only heard of one person. So, no. He's only heard of nine hours. me? No, I'm, that's, that was awful. <laughs> <laughs> it's possible. It's possible. Yeah. It, yeah. You know, I've, I've done the math. And I've, it, it's actually possible. So we've been doing 600 grand a month with no ads. Yeah, it's because YouTube. YouTube's so yeah, powerful. Yeah. He's, he's just crushing YouTube. Mm. Yeah. He's, this guy's yeah, YouTube that. Wow. and almost killing himself. Yeah. When the YouTube's that good, the videos are that good, that's a flywheel in itself. Because views and subscribers get views and subscribers. It is possible because right now, if I give you the breakdown, so right now we've got as well. Yeah. Yeah. So right now we've got. So right now, um, thirty-three percent of our calls come from three different sources. So we've got Inbound, which is slept on. We've got YouTube Organic, and we've got YouTube Ads. So this this account this might account for four hundred calls a month, right? So we get four hundred from this, which has always been pretty pretty competitive and pretty average. And 400 from that. So all we need to do, this, this, this right here, I figured out the other day, that our cost per acquisition for outbound is about $1,000. Right, so the, the metrics work like this. We've got, um, we've got 60% show rate. Um, it's 50 bucks per call. Our conversion rate's not as good. This, for this, is the weakest. It's like 8.7%. This is a shit conversion rate. But what that means is our average cost per, um, our average cost per client for outbound is $1,000. Where the ads, if we, if we jump over here, this is a 12.71% conversion rate. A 60% show rate. So the show rates are no different, stays the same, but the cost per call here is $180, right? So for us to get one client from here, we need 20 calls. One client from here, we need 13. So our cost per acquisition for YouTube is $2,340, which is 2.3 times more than this. Now, it means we need, on average, a few more calls. If I can learn to replace this with more of this, my business becomes 15% more profitable with one decision. And that's like, and the, the problem with the YouTube ads is it makes you lazy as fuck. Because like, we're, we're always like, we want to grow, we want to get more, more like, more customers, or we'll just spend more on ads. But look, that's costing us 2.3 times more, which is 33% of our entire revenue. So if you cut away half of that to account for the margin, it's like, we, we profit goes up by 15%. And for us, it's less about scale now, it's about optimization. So I've got to yeah. find these things everywhere I can. This is the biggest one right now. If I can replace this with, um, with inbound, which is something we've never touched before, like using like Facebook posts, Twitter, Instagram, shit, then I become a million dollars a year more profitable. So the reason I moved to Dubai, I was thinking like, how do I, like, how do I grow my business by twenty five percent? I'm like, why not? How do I just keep twenty five percent? The answer is Steph, by the way. Mm. Buy from her. What when you say album? What do you do album? Um, mm. Break it down. So we've got a couple of systems. This is the great thing about like, because obviously we teach all this stuff, so we're on the front lines. And it's really important to our clients that we keep 
getting our clients through outbound. Because as soon as we stop, like there's a there's a cut off. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we do we have cold DMs um, and we also have cold emails. So I've got um, my best friend, it's like called Will, who I hired to appointment setting for me. So he was looking he was looking for a cleaning job in a supermarket. So I was like, come just do some setting for a bit. Find it anyway. He crushed it. So he now manages a team of um, five setters who each have an average ABR of I think like four percent. Um, they use don't tell Jesse. They use school <coughs> to do the right <laughs> setting. Um, but we have Facebook, we have LinkedIn. We've also got a Facebook group which we don't use so much anymore. Um, then sometimes we don't use school if Jesse's in the room. We do if he's not. Um, <laughs> we also have some Twitter stuff that happens. But it's like a bit of a machine. Like it's a lot. It's a, there's way more operational complexity with that than that. But it's like twice as profitable. Yeah, I don't think that would be right for you though, because this is like targeted can, on yeah, we can, for existing. It would you work for B two C? Yeah, yeah, that's what that's what I said. Would it work from B two C? I don't think so. Maybe. You would it? You have to experiment with your. Oh, with busy with, with busy professionals, absolutely. You pop on yeah. LinkedIn, you find CEOs and directors, you can find. Yeah, so if you're teaching people to start YouTube automation, it's that they're, they're much harder to find. So we have we have the DM thing, and then we also have an email thing, which is where we basically just send links. Because that's our bread and butter. That was the, the genesis of the entire product is is using email outreach. So as soon as we stop doing that, we can no longer teach it because there's like this is the problem with outreach methods is like what works now will not work in three months. So right now we've got this problem where like Google's now asking people to verify phone numbers to create Google Workspace accounts to send the emails, um, and Skype and High Level don't work anymore. So we've got to find a solution, but it's because we're doing it, we found that solution now we can teach to our clients. It'd be like, did you have any YouTube channels yourself? Yeah. Yeah, so if you stop running those, it would immediately disqualify you to teach it. Yeah. Well, so yeah. agree, you'd be able to teach it for like two years, and then your knowledge would be out there. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem. You have to practice what you preach. That's, you said this in the last night. The last one, yeah, I remember you said that. He, yeah. he said to me, like, Will, do you trade anymore? I was like, no. He was like, and that's what he is. Yeah, and that's eventually. And I was like, I was set. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, I was yeah. like, you got a couple of years left before yeah. it catches up with you. It's like Sam, like not running in the service today. Like Quantum eventually became, yeah. I'd imagine, less valuable as, as his knowledge and he yeah. wasn't on the on the front lines. Yeah, I think some people perceived it like that. I still buy it. But I didn't. Stupidly. <laughs> One more question. If you have already four hundred hours of content to be like this in your course, what do you give on YouTube? Is it the same content or something else that you you know? You can't just water it down. Yeah. Because people don't mind. So like one of the videos I worked on this week is like how to build collaborative systems. And it's like a summary of like some of the stuff in that system genesis, like systems thinking and stuff. So like it was basically there's this diagram that talks about systems, anyone that learned from Sam will understand this. You have inputs, you have outputs, right? You have in the middle, you have processes, you have feedback, and then you have an environment. Right, and this is from Danella Meadows in Thinking in Systems in her book, where she basically explains what a system is and how it operates. So uh, this is like one of the this is the first principles. Yeah. This is something that if you want to understand like how to build client acquisition systems, you have to understand systems, which is this. You have to understand client acquisition, which is the psychology. So you have to merge it all. So anyway, I made a video on this, and it's taught in Actus Genesis, but in Actus Genesis it's a three-hour video, right? but on YouTube it might be like one hour. You know, it's just it's, I don't talk about throughput, what we're meant to etc. etc. But like most of my YouTube videos, like the ones that I've made up until now, have, I haven't put much thought into them. I just like sometimes I just turn on the camera and start chatting shit. <laughs> How are you going to talk about the growth of? Sorry to cut your face. The the growth of the YouTube channel because it sounds like it started off as like an energy outlet thing. Now it's become a no. It wasn't. Top. It was never okay. energy outlet. It was always a business decision. Okay, fair. Yeah, it's only recently become more of a way for me to actually have something to do. So um, how did how did you grow your channel organically? Okay, so this is the what I teach in the program. It's just value and volume. So, like, what is value? This is another. This is another first principle we define in the program client acquisition. So, value is created when pain is alleviated, right? So, what you have to do, well, I'll just well, value equals pain alleviation. I like it because it rhymed, and when I came up with it, I was very proud of myself. I just knew that was in it. Um, but what you have to do is make videos that remove pain from people's lives. There's two ways you grow online, at least from my understanding, it's a very limited one, is you either entertain or you alleviate pain. That also rhymes, conveniently. Really. You know, if you look at like Mr. Beast, he's not removing people's pain, although he might be for 10 minutes while she watches video and forget how shit your life is, right? 
So he's entertaining, but if you look at Paul Mosey, he's actually like, he's making a video that by you having watched that, you're one step closer to your goal. So whenever I make videos, I'm always asking myself, like, if someone watches this, are they in some way, shape, or form closer to getting more than one? And if they are, they're one step away from the pain of their current situation, which means you're creating value. And so I've done basically up until literally the last month, I made three videos a week um, for two years. And that's how I did it. Some of them flopped, some of them did really well. I never put too much thought into it because all my thought was going into the product. But it was also like a Chinese water torture thing, like people just couldn't get rid of me. And the other reason that the YouTube thing has done so well for us in terms of appointments is because every video has had the same call to action, the same description. If you watch any of my videos, you'll see the exact same CTA. So now I've got like, like 400 videos online, but they all point at the same front. And they're all getting like 10 views a day. So you add that up, that's like 4,000 or 5,000 views a day. And it's all going back to the front. And that will never go away. This is the way you should go. Anyway. Do you action every video? Hmm? Do you call, do you, in the actual video, do you do a call to action? Yeah, but it's so soft people don't notice. I literally say at the end, um, there's a link in the description if you want to buy my thing. I truly don't care if you click it or not. But if you're interested in how I can help you click it, I don't give two shits if you click it, have a good day. That's how I pitch it. Every video. Every video. It's five at, seconds. The, at the end. It's right at the end. It's five seconds at the end. They don't ask them to subscribe or anything. They don't care about subscribers. Do you think that would change if you moved it? Because you know people drop off, right? Do you think if you moved it even to the middle, they it comes back to this, It comes back to the question of like, our calendars are really good. So I'm not going to change it. Because like I could optimize it and like get in, look at the metrics, but like, are we breathing? Yes. I don't want to fix the tones. <laughs> you know? In your videos, do you only focus on the value and the message? Or do you also focus on what it looks like? If the, the background is nice, the quality is beautiful? I only start focusing on that recently. So like, if you look at like, I'll show you a, I'll show you a video of me mini tea grow, shall I? You can get an idea for how um, unhealthy I was. I will say this, and like something I'm going to try and do is go back to like, you, you want YouTube not to look like Netflix, and I think that's the problem I have right now. I, it's, I've lost a lot of authenticity with my audience, like something I've been realizing, is you're, you're trying to do too much, like what Will was saying in his video, like people want that, people want to turn on a video and be like, I know this guy, and I'm watching it, like Hermosi, you see his old videos, like that's what YouTube is about, it's you, and if you... And that's what I'm going to do when I go back. I'm going to reduce all friction or try to reduce it as much as possible and then throw a little sexy on it at the end. That's minimal. That's just you. So, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so what you're saying is, I've made you just better on YouTube. That's <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, an example. That's an example. Being with my 400 subscribers. Yeah. 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 I agree, I agree. So this, yeah. this, this was me a year ago when I was mid-build. So as you can see, I, I leave a lot to be desired and the look Oh my god. Wow. But, but that's the point, it's not professional. It's just like, the, the more it's just yeah. like, yeah. what matters yeah. is the yeah. words you use. Yeah. Yeah. People resonate more with those videos. I was in a dark place, man. Yeah, they do. They do. Yeah. It's like anyone watching my gadget. You can't be there, yeah, I mean. Are yeah. they scripted, John? Or no. free stuff? No, the new ones are, but the, the old ones were just like, whatever I wanted to say. Any any other questions for Charlie, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. and then one last thing I was going to say was, um, you said you wanted to do outbound, not inbound. Mm -hmm. You want to move to inbound? Yeah, we want to, we want to replace ads with inbound. Okay. What so, kind of, I don't have the amount of issues inbound, but technically they are inbound leads, but we don't need binary. So like, the, the thing that I want to be able to start building out is like, um, you, I'm sure you've all got a Facebook news feed, right? You know, you see those giveaway posts where someone's like, hey, if you comment me, like, I won't kill your family. And everyone's like, me, you know? Yeah, so I get a bit dark, isn't it? And then, yeah, then from there you set the appointment. And then also using like Twitter and like Instagram and stuff. We want to be able to like, so you can't wait for, for I can't wait. If you want to try and in one, I'm about to head off. So okay. Well, basically, the question I have for the, the goal of today is to go through like launch plan, a six month launch plan. Um, so I thought you'd probably be very qualified to kind of go on and comment on that for my offer. I was kind of going through some some iterations of what I wanted to start offering, and I don't have a current offer right now. So I spoke with David and um, right before, and we were speaking about the possibility of. Putting my knowledge in, in what I've done in my business, which is uh, kind of like workshop style trade um, so basically to offer to tradesmen in the UK the ability to create systems and standard operating procedures. Alright, well, the problem you've got off the web is they won't resonate. 
Yeah. If you say standard operating procedures of tradesmen, they'll be like, what the fuck is that? To you, it makes sense, right? But you, like, even if you use the word system or process, they won't get it. So you're probably along the right lines, but you definitely need to think about the message. So if I say to you, I'm going to have a good SOP, because you get all excited, because you know what they are. But, sorry, I interrupted you. Yeah, um, so the, the, the kind of essence of the course is to, to find a way to put packing my knowledge in, in, into a package that could help people create, take their skills, create a business, and then remove themselves from that daily life so they can have more time instead of just uh, making more money all the time. So that's kind of going on the story that I've done with my business. So the context is that I created a campfire conversion business and learned the skill, and then created a, created a team. And then remove myself. So this, this is what I would do if I was you. This is what we did. Is just start with one problem, solve like one thing. And for them, it's probably the client acquisition. This is what we said. We just because Easy Grow Now solves like fifteen different problems. But you're going to build this thing, and then like eighty percent of the people you need, and then they're going to be like all confused and shit. I just focus on one. Like, what's the most painful problem you can solve? Well, I think it's a trade and it's their, their time management. Because they they don't have a shortage of work. They're yeah. So what you're, what, you're then, what you're trying to help them with is labour. Yeah. You solve that problem. If, it, if you solve that, that's eighty percent of the way there. That's where the value is. Because their biggest problem is with like I haven't got the time to do the jobs, and you come in and you say, hey, I guarantee I will place qualified labour for you. And if they don't stick around for six months, I'll give you back all your money. Pay our results back. But if you if you come at them and you, you come over here and you're like, I'm going to help you do with SOPs. And then we're going to talk about time management, and then we're going to talk about systems, and then we're going to talk about processes. Uh, all I want to do is fix toilets. Yeah. And make more money doing that. So if you just focus on one, then it's much easier to build an offer out one thing. It's like you look at easy growth, just 20 clients. But it's like this whole mess, right? Yeah. What you're saying, Charlie, for him is the hook. The hook is the main thing that they're focused on, but when they come in, there's a whole heap of other things that you need to solve in order to yeah. get into it. But I would still just, yeah, exactly. It's kind of like the paradigm thing, right? Maybe, but I would just solve that and build your course around that first. And then it's just easy, mate. Then you just got one thing. Mm. Try and solve five problems for someone before you solve one. It'd be like if, if we tried to solve a tax problem before you even make the money. What's the problem? Yeah. What, what type of problem would somebody who isn't looking for my industry have where the hook would hook them in? Well, it's whatever is the most painful. Because remember, value is created when pain is alleviated. So, so, so business is a transaction. You want money, you have to give value. Yeah. How do we create value? We remove pain. How do we remove pain? We find the most painful thing you solve for. Yeah, so it's money, it's making money. Well, that's what it is for them, yeah. For, yeah. for, for, for his clients, it's going to be labor. Yeah. For you guys, it's actually figuring out what the hell to offer. That's what you're thinking. If that's solved, then value is created. Yeah. Pain is alleviated, we'll make some money, right? Yeah. Give my job for me. So a quick six months and just like five months. I think months. you need to remove this six months. Okay. Where's the, where's the six months come from? I don't know, it's just on the launch. This is, like, the, this is the thing, like you have to, if you're starting, most of these time frames that, you, that you're creating are arbitrary. They're not rooted in critical thinking or foundations. They're just wrong. No offense, right? Yeah, no, no, absolutely. But like if you, if, you, if you think it's right, like why mm -hmm. is it right? Is that what the market wants to hear? Do you know six months resonates with them? Do you know that's what they want to buy? Do you know exactly what they want to buy? In my action plan, you know, to go away from this, uh, Right, oh, I see. So you're not doing, you're not pitching it to six months. No, I'm saying about my next six months. You know, how would how would I structure? I would, I would just think. How did you go through that process, basically? <sighs> All right. Well, so I would timeline it. This is what Bo and I do if we ever need to like fix the problem. So, what do you want? Let's try the course, launch the course, and, and scale it to the weekend. For example. So you want to come to the right? So what what you need to do here is you start with the numbers. You need to reverse it, reverse it back, right? So, what do you want to charge? I'm not thought about that yet. Okay, well, let's, let's think about it. So, you want something probably relatively high ticket, like five grand, we'll just throw that out there. All right, so that means, you know, 5K, let's just arbitrarily pull that out for us. It's only 20 clients, right? So, you need to figure out how to sign 20 clients or not. That's your goal. So, you should buy each one, not saying you should buy each But, so, in order for you to get 20 clients, like, now, we can, now we've got an action, we need 20 people, right? So here we've got the acquisition. So we can bring it all the way back to the beginning. So what do we have to have to have a client? We need an appointment, right? So now we can start thinking about this a little bit more critically. Like how do we get 20 clients? Well, let's say we've got a 20% sales conversion, right? Someone help me out here. It's been a long day. Four. 400? Uh, 
you said for um, 20%. So if, you've got, if you've got a 20% sales conversion rate and to make 20 clients, what is that? It's literally 100, I'm being absolutely correct. Yeah. Right, cool. So you need, to get, you need to figure out how to get 100 points, right? And then if you want to figure out how to, well, we, there's obviously the show rate thing in between there, so you probably actually need to extend this to like 130, right? So that should be your goal is like, how do I get 130 points, right? But in order for you to do that, you need to have something to sell, which is obviously what we're trying to solve at the beginning. We know we need to have it at a relatively high price because you need to be able to convert it, right? You don't want to do low ticket. So, what do you sell? Well, you sell a solution. How do you find a solution? You find the problem. You define the problem as the labor. So, it all starts back here with the labor. And this is why a product is first, because if you, if you solve this, this